It's time to turn up the heat. If you haven't seen the previous video, go here as it explains more about the Ultra Convergence, a late game Ultra Space Area. Next up we travel to the Ultra Volcano. It kinda speaks for itself what it is. Our melty region where we need some assistance from the local populace to get to the next Paradox Seasonal Pokemon. Let's first meet the Pokemon that will be providing assistance to us. They may not exactly know they're helping us, but let's meet Beast Paradox Torterra. Most of the Pokemon of the Ultra Volcano have seemingly picked up a lot of heat and metal to help survive the environment. Yeah, still types are weak to fire, I know, but it still makes sense they'd start sucking up those minerals here. Torterra is no different. I wanted something very similar to their regular form, as I feel like Torterra has an air of friendliness to them, even though they're giant tortoise that could pancake me in a second. Here Torterra's leafy greens couldn't really survive the heat, and has instead given way to some sharp spikies. I wanted to bring in a bit of Ankylosaurus or even Ankylomon from Digimon here, while also making it feel a little industrial in design, like some kind of primitive city almost, with spires on its back that could also look a bit like a city. And when we meet some later Pokemon, you'll understand that maybe they like to live on its back. While many of the other Ultra Space Beasts had to become some real freaks, Torterra luckily gets to keep most of its normal world form. I imagine after you clear this dungeon, these massive lads could be seen stomping about, even from far away distances, as you fly around in the Rotojet. Gotta love the pain of doing sharp angular spikes and keeping it all in perspective here, but I think that jagged blockiness really helps sell this big lunk. Torterra, Beast Paradox form, the Iron Shell Pokemon, a Steel and Ground type. Another Pokemon that underwent body changes due to the sweltering conditions of the Ultra Volcano. Torterra lost its leafy body and instead developed sharp, heat resistant spines and armor to adapt to the harsh environment and other Pokemon. Each stump of Torterra causes thunderous rumbles and erupts lava from the cracked ground. Torterra utilizes this ability strategically to force opponents into the molten lava below. Despite their imposing size and appearance, they are surprisingly docile and gentle, preferring to be given a wide berth. Torterra has the Ultra ability Iron Barbs, and the Ultra abilities cannot be removed and stays when changing forms. And if you switch a normal Torterra into the Beast Paradox Torterra, you don't, you know, immediately lose the ability. They can be switched back if from an original Torterra, don't worry. So our big friend here is our main gimmick for the Ultra Volcano, as one particularly large one would be stomping lazily about. Sadly, the Rotomech needs to stay in its robo form here to be able to collect the cooling balloons found around the area. Otherwise, you might explode. A bit like that Zuma part in the OG Jack and Daxter. In this area, the puzzle is essentially large lava rivers block your way to the end. So you'd have to knock down minerals from high above on the spires to lead Torterra Ooh, over to them and will knock them down with a full on ramming charge. Or sometimes you'll literally walk into the rivers of lava so you can cross. It's a mutual deal as Torterra gets a delectable mineral meal. But of course it isn't just Torterra here so let's meet the sunny form for disaster form, the Evo to cast form I introduced in the previous Ultra Plains episode, being a normal and dark type. I like the idea of disaster form, feeling both strangely human but also deceptively alien. Listen to me talking about this creature like it's an artwork at the Louvre. So my idea for the sunny form for disaster form was to be the Kiki to cast form's Boba. Which is the effect where words have feelings, Kiki being sharp and angular, while Boba feels round and soft, so disaster form's Kiki form has a much more jagged look, feeling like an astronaut but also a bit of a spaceship mixed with some kind of alien beacon or lighthouse. You just don't want to touch this thing as it's just too sharp and sunny. It's always letting out a radius of draining heat and is partially the reason why the volcano is as hot as they are. Maybe the four seasons are the ones causing the disaster storms to do what they are doing. They're just these little henchmen here. I imagine when this form of disaster form gets angry that bubble around their head expands and those sharp bits shift around much like how Iron Moth does it. Disaster form, the wild weather Pokemon of fire and dark type, sunny day form. 
Evolves from Cast Form while in the Ultra Convergence or when exposed to an Ultra Stone. Cast Form that find their way into the Ultra Convergence quickly adapt to the wild weather conditions of each biome. This rapidly evolves Cast Form into its disastrous evolution. The heat that emanates from Disaster Swarm is incredibly draining and can even ignite clothing and other flammable objects. Disaster Swarm revels in watching things burn. Disaster Swarm in all forms have the ability Weather Warning, which changes their form depending on the weather and powers up the weather when it transforms. Let's next meet another Beast Paradox starter, one that is everyone's favourite Gen 1 Pokemon, Charizard. Well, at least Game Freaks of the amount of forms it's gone here, so here's to one more. Woo! I actually wanted this to feel like some kind of strange mix between Charizard and Aerodactyl. Almost to the point where I didn't know whether to call it Beast Paradox Charizard with Aerodactyl tires or the reverse. Here those sneaky pebbles now don't do as much damage to the poor fat lizard. Letting it be a bit more carefree, especially in the area where, you know, stones are flying everywhere. Of course, because of the combination of the two, this Beast Paradox Charizard is creatively based off the Aerodactylus making us have a full loop of Pokemon to dinosaur named after a Pokemon, back to a Pokemon based on the dinosaur. Now we just need a Charizardalus or something like that. Well, goodbye everyone, time to become an archaeologist so I can discover something and name it that. In the end, I decided to give it the Charizard colours to the head and neck, which definitely gives out Charizard vibes. So meet another wonderful form for Charizard. I gotta stop saying Charizard starting to lose meaning. Charizard, Beast Paradox form, the Pterosaur Pokemon, a steel and flying type. The constant volcanic activity of the Ultra Volcano has led Charizard to develop a sturdier body and increase flying speed to avoid the large stones. Some speculate this form may be an ancient link to Aerodactyl. Charizard exhibits a merciless and cruel streak, often flying to other biomes within the Ultra Convergence to capture smaller prey and return them to the volcano, where they are roasted alive. Researchers have encountered dangerous situations with Charizard, exercise extreme caution around them. Charizard has the Ultra ability, Ultra Gale Wings. Now it's time to meet the denizens of the Ultra Convergence. They are Pokemon, but they also make little enclaves in both the Ultra Volcano and the Ultra Snowfields in different forms. So I wanted to make something feeling a bit like the Melinxes in Monster Hunter. Creatures that can be seen weirdly wandering around, maybe having little homes and doing strangely human things. But get too close and they'll start battling with you on site. My focus though was for them to be sort of creatures that would utilize the parts of the Pokemon found within their biomes to armor themselves up. And as I'm writing this, I didn't notice how monster hunter these guys actually are. So scrap at here wander around the Ultra Volcano, being little gremlins and just straight up tearing chunks off steel type Pokemon and forging them into helmets and armor and maybe even little huts for their villages, being sort of a cuboine look to them, but here's a little bit of a spoiler. Underneath they're definitely wombat in looks, which I thought was a little fun tie to the Ultra Convergence, sort of sitting almost parallel to a star in some kind of weird ultra space pocket. But they are based on one bar or one bullet. These little lads are actually considered Ultra Beasts. Scrap Out, the Scavenger Pokemon, a fire and psychic type. Found exclusively within the Ultra Convergence, Scrap Out is categorized as a type of Ultra Beast due to its apparent lack of relatives in our world. Scrap Out are remarkable Pokemon that utilize their psychic abilities through magnetism, tearing chunks off steel type Pokemon to integrate into their own bodies. They initially have limited control over this power before evolving. Small communities of these Pokemon have been discovered, where they appear willing to engage in trade and do not pose an immediate threat to humans. Scrapout has the ability Steelworker. The evolution for Scrapout gets a bit Magneto here. A lot Magneto, actually. Getting a new large helmet that gives it powerful psychic energies, the helmet acting as a sort of focus for it. And when a scrap out evolves, they set out to create their own village of scrap outs to lead. But I wanted to make sure the whole Pokemon had this energy of being decked out in gold. Oh! Don't ask it, or me, where the gold came from. You don't want to know. And I'm not just saying this because I don't have an actual answer. <laughs> no, no, not at all. It gives sort of Sultan vibes too. It's interesting that for the most part, this Pokemon would be kind of a predator Pokemon for many of the beast paradoxes found here. 
And now all I can imagine is roving bands of scrap at being led by one of these guys and just swarming a Torterra and then all that's left is a pile of bones stripped to their steel like a cartoon school of piranha. Magnatimus, the leader Pokemon, a fire and psychic type. When a Scrapat collects enough metal, it evolves into this form, often breaking away from its village to become the leader of a new group of Scrapat. The helmet on its head serves as a focal point for its powers. Magnatimus can effortlessly strip metal from a Gudra, and even construct entire Scrapat villages in a single day. An Elder Magnatimus typically becomes heavily adorned with metal, using its psychic abilities to float effortlessly rather than relying on conventional movement. Magnatimus has the ability Steelworker. You'll notice that Gudra was mentioned in the previous entry, and yes, I wanted to rep one of my favorite pseudo-legendaries here in Ultra Space, but instead of its normal form, it is actually a Beast Paradox form of Gudra's Hisuian form. This form is based on a very much real-life Pokemon, the Daily Foot Gastropod. This thing literally looks like it's made from lava already. And if you don't know about this absolute banger of an animal, it normally lives in deep sea vents, so maybe you could even see Gudra in the Ultra Basin. But not only that, the scaly foot gastropod here has a shell made of iron sulfates, and even its foot part is scaled with metals. And also it just has a really large heart, so it just loves better. It's a bit like me in that way. The large shell of Hisuian Gudra moves up to the top of the head, can you uh, see a bit of a resemblance here? I'm gonna eat it. Ah! As well as having sort of armored skirting around the body, kind of looking like the foot of the scaly foot gastropod. Hisuian Gudra looks kind of depressed in a way, but our Gudra here is just super chill and even loves to give hugs. I'd advise against it though, unless you really want to be melted alive. You do, don't you, you little freaks? <coughs> Gudra, Beast Paradox form, the scaly foot Pokemon, a steel and fire type. The bestial form of Gudra bears a closer resemblance to its Hisuian form, featuring a large shell that covers its body. Gudra appears to have assimilated with flowing lava. These Pokemon enjoy consuming metals found on the Ultra Volcano, which they absorb to strengthen both their metallic exterior and skeleton. However, the metals are partially toxic, causing a painful combination for those near. Gudra is generally friendly, but due to its association with lava and toxicity, it's advisable to avoid physical contact with it, regardless of how much it may seem to seek affection. This form of Gudra has a new ability called Steel Skeleton, where this Pokemon is immune to being paralyzed, and the stats can't be lowered while above half HP. Everyone loves the Snom! If you don't, you're on some kind of list, I'm sure. The Ultra Convergence did a funny little thing here and forced our two little friends, Snom and Larvesta, to be found in the opposite biomes. Somewhere out there, there's a very cold Larvesta. But let's focus on little Snom, who isn't so little anymore. Our latest form of Snom here is based on the Flannel Moth's lava form. While the moth is very cute and fluffy, what's so wrong about the lava? Well, this horrid little thing has the joy of being covered in bristles that are actual venomous spines that cause painful reactions on human skin. Isn't that just lovely? Funny enough, the moth's fuzz is fine, so imagine if Beast Paradox Storm ever evolved, the resulting Pokemon would be quite soft and fuzzy. Maybe that's why it can't evolve. Snum becomes a fire poison type in this form thanks to the white hot feeling the funnel moth gives when you get the venom in you. Then, well, poison speaks for itself. This is a much larger form of snob that moves slowly about. I like to imagine that there may be some form of hardy plant around the area that looks similar to this form of snob that lets it be a sort of jump scare if you were to maybe interact with an item in front of it. I thought that we could spruce up the face of snob a bit with some almost tattoo-like lines that give it just a bit more of an aggressive look, as well as looking almost like sort of lava channels. Aggressive in snob isn't exactly a scent as many have uttered, but I guess here we are. Beast Paradox Snom, the putrid Pokemon, a poison and fire type. A strange adaptation caused Snom to grow larger and become covered in toxic bristles, which not only regulate its body heat, but also deter predators. Researchers stung by Snom's bristles reported glowing at the sting site, accompanied by intense pain akin to their skin melting away, an unbearable experience. 
Although very slow moving, some can launch its bristles when provoked. Because of this capability, it is strongly advised to maintain a safe distance from this Pokemon. Stom has the Ultra ability, Ultra Merciless. Say so you've made bridges instead of burning them with the help of Torterra, and you are now close to a volcanic arena. If I had a nickel for every time we had a volcanic arena in my region, I'd add up two nickels, which isn't much, but it's weird it's happened twice. Once in the center, you'd find an orange glowing crystal that, upon interacting with, would call upon the ire of our next seasonal legendary. The mountain over yonder would erupt, and one of those eruptions doesn't contain a rock, but instead a draconic force ready to throw down with you emerging from the lava. Originally, Summerel was to represent the sort of beauty that summer brings, yummy fruits and greenery, but there's another side to summer, especially in Australia, that wasn't shown, and that's droughts and bushfires. So the Beast Paradox form of Summerel introduces that concept, and is probably the most visually dissimilar of the four. Those beautiful leafy horns and berry tail have now burnt up completely, much like Torterra does. But they didn't become iron or anything like that, instead becoming smoldering sticks and for the tail a constantly burning shrub. Which, it's not biblical I promise, in the slightest, don't look into it or anything. This one takes on a lung dragon look, although it would have worked well as a red dragon too. Get some dungeon meshy vibes up in here. I imagine that Sombrel here would have similar feel and animations to that of Mega Rayquaza. Alright, you ready to battle this powered up form of Sombrel? <laughs> Sombrel Beast Paradox Form, the Summer Dragon Pokemon, a Fire and Dragon type. The protector of the Ultra Volcano is the Beast Paradox Form of Sombrel, which has taken on a shocking change. The beautiful leaves and food that once grew on Summerel could no longer survive in this form and burnt up, becoming a raging blaze on their tail and horns. These fires flare up even stronger when enraged. The mountain of the Ultra Volcano is where Summerel normally lives and will take refuge in when their energy is too low. Summerel has a new ability called Fire Force, which boosts the power of fire type moves for this Pokemon and their allies. The fight again would be a regular Pokemon battle to truly test your teams, but Summerel wouldn't play fair, summoning disaster forms to power up the sun as well as calling in beast snobs to weaken your team with poison and the merciless ability. It would be a real challenge, but I believe in you. Once you've thoroughly trounced Summerel in the fire force, you'd be able to pick up Summerel's beast paradox stone, while Summerel retreats back to the mountain, allowing you to transform your own Summerel, as well as unlocking the next lock on the research lab. Only a few more before we can reach the final area. Make sure to comment down below where you'd like to go next as well. Vote now on your devices whether you'd like to go to the Ultra Basin, Forest or Snowfields next. So what did you think of the video? Comment your thoughts down below as well as vote for the next area and any Pokemon here are going to be joining your star and team. And don't forget to like and subscribe as well as hit the bell to never miss another video. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time. No one cared who I was till I put on the mask.